Most modern concepts of consonants have, of course, not stuck with Pythagorean philosophy, but have gone on to other ways of thinking about why it is that some musical tone combinations are pleasing and others relatively less pleasing. And the person who is historically most important in this respect is Hermann uh, von Helmholtz. So you may well have heard of uh, Helmholtz in other contexts. His major work, I think, was uh, on vision. He was also a physicist uh, of major proportions in the 19th century, and thermodynamics is attributed to his, uh, in, in, in part, to his insightful thinking in the second half of the 19th century. But he was very interested in music, a competent musician, as many intellectuals of uh, that era were, a competent uh, keyboardist himself, and very interested in explaining uh, consonants and dissonance uh, in physical terms. What he did was to uh, understand, and he was, uh, this guy was a, a genius of the first uh, order, not only in physics, but also in thinking about uh, music and, and vision. Uh, among other things, he invented the modern ophthalmoscope. But his idea was that the reason for consonance and distance had to do with the physical nature of what he called beating and roughness that emerged when two tones are played together. And he imagined that, well, he didn't imagine, he demonstrated that beating and roughness arose from tones that when played together uh, caused a constructive interference that led to what you see here. So let's consider this in a more specific way. So here is uh, uh, C and here is C sharp and the frequencies uh, in the middle range of the piano are 262 hertz for C and 277 hertz cycles per second for C sharp. And you can see that when these two tones are uh, played together and they form a minor second, that they interfere with each other, causing an auditory bumpiness, which we'll hear in a second, that has a frequency of about 30 hertz. So what Helmholtz surmised and indeed demonstrated mathematically is that when two tones interfere with each other in this physical way, generating a tonal combination that has constructive interference, that has peaks and valleys at a relatively low frequency, somewhere in the range of 15 to 30 or a little bit more in terms of cycles per second, you hear a bumpiness, a roughness to that. And as the frequency increases, that roughness tends to go away. And based on that, so if you hear a sine tone or a piano tone, uh, any tone at say the frequency of 262 hertz or 277 hertz, that tone sounds fine. You don't hear any roughness in C or C sharp played in the middle range of the piano. But when you play them together, they combine to form a change, an up and down variation in the amplitude that you hear as he described it, rough or bumpy. And his idea was that this roughness or bumpiness when you heard it uh, was the definition of dissonance, that that roughness or bump bumpiness was annoying, dissonant, unpleasing, displeasing. And for that reason, he defined consonants as the absence of dissonance. Let's listen to two sine tones that present an example of this roughness where uh, the destructive and constructive interference of the tones causes this up and down uh, bumpiness that you can hear and that Helmholtz attributed to the reason that we find certain tone combinations displeasing and he considered, as I said, the absence of this displeasing quality of bumpiness and roughness to be the definition of consonants.
This idea presented by Helmholtz in the latter part of the 19th century, the book that he wrote on this called On the Sensations of Tones was published in 1862 and as you can see it's still in press today indicative of the fact that what he says is eminently sensible and many people still take this today as the primary explanation of consonance and dissonance. Roughness, dissonant, the absence of roughness, constant. But there were problems uh, from the outset in accepting this uh, definition of consonance and dissonance. And one of them is indicated here, perhaps the main one. There are others, and in some of the readings that you will have available to you in the, the bibliography, you can uh, read more about this. But one of the main problems that was recognized pretty soon in the uh, early 20th century was that when you present two tones, let's say two sign tones, to the right ear and the left ear independently, there is no longer any beating because the two tones are coming into two different ears. So they're not being combined physically at the ear. One uh, the C and the C sharp, for example, are being presented to the right ear and the left ear respectively. So even though they're presented to the two ears, uh, you still hear them as dissonant tone combinations, even though the physical beating by virtue of their independent presentation to the right and the left ear is gone. So that and several other um, instances where consonance and dissonance really didn't make sense as explained just as beating and roughness um, led people to think of other ways uh, of explaining consonance and dissonance and this is what we're going to uh, turn to next.